Hey guys, today I want to demo for you my brush pack that is now becoming available on my Gumroad page which I'll link down in the description. I think with a lot of packs you can get, whether it be in Photoshop or TV Paint or, or any of the other programs, people sell you a huge variety of brushes that realistically they never use. I could sell you a rainbow, you know, like a rainbow brush. How often are you going to use this? It's really flashy, it's really like in your face, loud, and you're never going to use it. So these brushes might look quite boring, but they have been tweaked over many, many different iterations. The idea with these is that they're versatile, that they're reliable, and you can use them in everyday sketching to actually get across what you want to, to say. I'm going to start with the basic sharp line. This is a problem that I encountered in TV Paint, which I managed to overcome using custom brushes. If we look at the keyboard shortcuts in uh, TV Paint, uh, going to B, the tool option here that it activates is the custom brush. So that means that using the B key, I can go back to my brush, but it will take me back to the custom brush. It will not take me back to the pen. It will not take me back to the pencil. So you could set up keyboard shortcuts for all of these different tools, but isn't that a bit of a pain? So the way around this that I found is to create a custom brush that mimics certain other keys. Let's say you want a clean pen, a sharp, clean pen. Well, I've created an equivalent of that on the custom brushes. This is like a sharp, clean line. It basically just does exactly what you want it to do. Sometimes you just want a brush that is the basic. And so this is just me sketching with it. I mean, I know the drawings are very um, loose, very random. If you've got a shaky hand, you might want it to be smooth. So there's this tab here. This isn't something that I created, but line smoothing. If you activate line smoothing on like, let's say, set it to eight and click that, it's gonna lag behind your cursor just a little bit. And, and it kind of averages it out, but it means that you can have these really smooth curves, even if you're going slow. Even if you're going slow, you, these are really smooth, curvaceous, flowy lines. So that's a, a thing that can help you with that. And that's in fact what I used, this tool on my recent Steam demo where I created Steam animation. This is pretty much the only thing that I use, that and the gradient, which I'll get into in a minute. So let me take off that line smoothing to give me the most precise. Let's go to the classy pencil line. Now this is exactly how I describe it. It is a pencil line, but it's classy. It's got a slight squash to it, which I like. So it's a bit more angular. And by the way, that, that responds to uh, where the angle is on your stylus. So, so that's kind of, kind of nice. But uh, you can just see, just from me doing these random strokes, that these are, these are nice lines. It, it's just like, it just comes out so nicely. Um, I've got a paper texture set to it, so that especially where it, you're doing light lines, you'll find that there's this lovely paper texture embedded in there. And then as you go darker, it, it kind of fills that out to be um, to be to be completely solid. But again, it's calibrated in this way where you can uh, you can build up texture like that, and it, and it feels like a real um, real kind of pencil marker or, or a graphite marker. Um, next, we have this brush is really special to me, and for a long time I haven't really wanted to release it because. It's so important to my style of animation. I have used this on everything from like Encounter to um, to Yuku and Lily, Pandora, um, so many things. So many of my animations are characterized by this line. And it is, I. it's called the Ultimate Chad Brush. Basically, I named it after my client. One iteration of this I was working on while I was working with my client, whose name is Chad. And so it's a name that just stuck. And so now it's the Ultimate Chad Brush because it's gone through so many different iterations. When I first got this brush from my friend, it was good, but it, it had some problems with it, which I've since fixed. And it was kind of tricky to fix those lines. But now you have this, um, there's no paper texture on, and there's this beautiful, rich, um, gritty texture that's embedded into the, each line. 
and it's just such a complex kind of textured line that I really, really enjoy. And you'll see it, you'll see it in all of my animations. You know, have a look at Encounter. That, that film I made pretty much entirely with this brush, all the character animation. So I can tell you that this brush has been through everything. It can handle pretty much anything you, you throw at it. It's my favorite brush and I have no plans to, to stop using it. And uh, now I want to give it to you if you want it. It's really capable of drawing anything and it, and it gives everything this really rich, deep, gritty style to it. It is quite a commanding presence. So if you use this on like a collaboration or something, like people are going to notice the difference between it. So just keep that in mind. This is where you want to be deliberately kind of have that handmade, hand drawn feel to everything and um, it's, I can tell you it's perfect for that. It gives you that, but it also gives you a lot of control. It's, it's got a sufficient amount of control. The taper is beautiful on it. Look at that. It just, it tapers so nicely where it just gives you a little bit at the end. When it comes to coloring, I would actually do my coloring all on a layer below. So I'd create a layer below like that. And let's go back to this. Um, instead of the source being layer, I'll just change it to display. And so now it's behind and I actually have control over this fill here. So I really like the degree of control you can get using that method. And that's the method I would recommend if you're going to use the ultimate Chad brush in a lot of your projects. Yeah, that is by far the, my most used brush out of anything ever. So those are the lines, but let's go on to the brushes. Sweet watercolor. I actually adapted this from a uh, TV paint default brush. I just tweaked it a little bit to give it some of my own settings, but I really, really like this brush. And I was just playing around with it here um, and just seeing what it can do. And uh, excuse the bad hand drawing. I was not really caring about the hand, but I started doing the sketches and I, that's when I realized this looks like such nice watercolor lines when you kind of line something with watercolor and it has this softness to it and this texture in there. I love the look of this. So when I'm doing storyboarding now, or if I'm doing like just sketches, if I'm doing life drawing, this brush is fantastic. But the cool thing about it as well is that if you just press down a little bit harder, it goes to this, it goes fully opaque, which I really like. Um, I like having that control to where I see a point of emphasis on something like the eye here, I'll just press down a little bit and it will give me that. Yeah, the taper is, is next level on this. Like look at that lovely textured taper. It's got a little bit of inconsistency, which is what I always look for in a brush. I always look for a little bit of character that can come through on the lines, but not something that's going to um, impede on your drawings if you're trying to draw something accurately. So uh, this is just something, a little uh, landscape picture I did of a, of a boat. And this is all done with this um, brush. Uh, the only thing that wasn't done was with the gradient, which, it, which I'll get to in, in a minute. The mountains in the background, I basically wanted to change it a little bit to have a softer kind of texture here with the white background. So all I had to do to do that is change it here in this setting from alpha stamp to luma inverse stamp. And then you get this amazing effect, which is a lot more painterly. And it's great for if you want to do some kind of atmospheric texture in the background. And then if you wanted that to have more, more bites to it, you just flip back to um, alpha stamp and you know now it's more of a line now it's more of a, a sort of hard line which is a lot more assertive so i like just going back and forth between them if i'm sketching something if you're in tv paint and you're trying to create something that's traditional you want to see those lines you want to see the strokes and where they've been um, if you value that kind of approach of like a traditionalist approach um here's another sketch that i made I, i've been learning to draw horses i want to be able to draw horses much better. So yeah, I was just using sweet watercolor for, for the basis of this. And I was thinking maybe we can, uh, maybe we can add onto this with some of the other brushes here. So uh, let's see if we can. Let's, um, the streaky soft flame, I love this. And I started out by using this for fire. We can just go onto the streaky soft flame and go into the main or something. Cause I think the main, if you want it to be like big fluffy, but also have that direction to it, let's just, let's just put the streaky soft flame in and see what that does. 
and it's very sensitive to the pressure so you got to be light with it you don't need a lot of pressure to be put on this and let's do the tail now I tend to stroke upwards to to get there so that the taper I can focus on the taper so now that looks a lot more kind of thick like a much thicker mane and I can bring this size down to do longer thin streaks like that um, I can also play about with the uh, the pressure with if I want with the profile editor so I can go like I get more time with it being thin feel free to um, to edit these to how you like if you want to continue it further and do more iterations just on the basic settings you're more than welcome to and you can you can um, change the the brush to, to how you like let's go on to the katana slash now I use this more rarely but I just love how much character this brush has to it so the kind of shapes you can build with this line it are so strong like it's such it's got such attitude to it and I actually started out um, I downloaded a brush from someone in Photoshop now you can't load Photoshop brushes into TV paint but I loved this Photoshop brush that I've been using from I just downloaded it years ago and I loved the brush so much I wanted to bring it into TV paint I, I eventually just kind of experimented enough to get a brush that was like the brush I was using in Photoshop and that's what this brush is basically and so you'll see I, I use this a lot in the backgrounds of Yuko and Lily which I'll hopefully remember to put up on the screen here um, and, and it just gave everything a really nice shape it meant that I could um, I had much more interesting shapes because of this brush. It's a very flat brush which the angle of the brush changes depending on the rotation of your hand. So you can actually have it change just over the course of of, um, of the single stroke like that. And you can see like every line, I'm not even trying with this, and every line looks beautiful. Every line has has amazing shape and line width variation to it because of that flat shape. I forgot to mention here, but uh, you can also animate with this brush by just bringing the size of it down. And here's an example of where I've done that recently with just this little animation test. It's also got texture embedded in the actual brush itself. Now you can see if I really go down hard on this, the cool thing about this that I've uh, managed to get from it is that just subtly some darker lines that have been put in on these streaks which indicate the direction that you've brushed it in it's got that as like an artifact to it you might want to use this for just a special stroke like here's an idea we'll just put this on a layer behind and we'll just do a, a kind of uh, maybe or maybe something like and maybe we'll put one in the foreground as well Make another layer above and just white out where the body is and we've got a nice little two-tone sketch now with the dark blue and the and the deep red that's going to be a nice stroke in there um, I used it a lot when creating clouds um, and, and it definitely came out in a very particular style that you don't get with other brushes when I was making the cloud and so that's one brush in my arsenal which sometimes I'll pull out and it makes a big a big difference let's say we want this to be filled with something so let's um, go around this with the lasso tool just to contain it okay so we've we've got this lasso tool that's contained the the fill that we're gonna give it and one thing you can do so instead of just filling it with a block color give it a brush and reduce the opacity of, of the brush just a little bit like that and then just um, fill it in and just do these random strokes and you're gonna find that you build up very quickly a texture that you didn't have before and I, I care a lot about texture you could even do this in like animation so I could create a few frames of this and do a different texture every time so let's just do that whole thing again now and do it for a few frames and then you can actually you could actually play that through and it's gonna have this shimmering effect and it's where you let those gaps through that I think is uh, the best part of it 
I'm going to use the flat part here to cover more distance, to cover more space. So we can like see just from that that it's creating this really nice kind of shimmering effect where there's there's a degree of randomness in it and it's letting light through uh, just in just in specific little pockets. So it, uh, this is a brush that's very versatile. It opens up a lot of different possibilities. There are certain brushes that you just come back to again and again and again because you can rely on them and because they're very versatile brushes and you can actually do a lot with those brushes. Here's another one, and, and I know this is super simple, but I really like this uh, this brush. So um, it's the, so now we're on to decoration. Now this is the dot decoration, and I'll just, I'll just pull this out occasionally, and I tell you what, the sketches that I make, these little doodles, they absolutely come alive when I add some dots <laughs> into the into the doodles. You can even see it just here, just with this swirl, you know, if you add some dots like this, wow, does it make a difference. Uh, you can do things like, um, you know, just add more pressure on as you go, and it's gonna look like it's going back in perspective. Wow, that makes such a difference. And I've started using this um, in character designs as well. I've been giving all of my characters jewelry. <laughs> or like Aboriginal dots. You could have like, you know, this is like, it just opens up loads of possibilities, gives you, you know, something to imagine. And once you have a drawing, just adding loads of decoration to it. Um, let's try, if I made something with the classy pencil line, let's, I'm not very good at drawing on the spot, but let's try. Yeah, I like this uh, classy pencil line for storyboarding. It's really nice, just gives you really assertive drawings. I'm always trying to make assertive drawings which are like, can communicate very quickly. But now, you know, we've got like a really rough sketch here that I've just pulled out of nowhere. Add some of these on and immediately it comes to life. Uh, can add some on the head, I don't know. Like here's, a, here's another sketch um, that I made earlier that ha that uses these and it's just like all these beads and it just, you know, without them, it just doesn't look the same. It doesn't look quite as, uh, quite as visually interesting and it's just a way of just injecting detail into your drawing without putting in loads of time, might I add. Like if I were to use the basic sharp line just uh, as the normal one and just try and dot these in myself, I mean, I could do it, but it, how long would it take to do that? Whereas with this, it just makes it so fast just to, just to loop these rounds. Next, I wanna show you the animated sparkle. This is just an extra one. I don't use it all the time, but when I pull it out, it is a lot of fun. So let's just give myself a dark canvas. Let's create just 25 frames, add empty instances. Now, this is why I call it an animated sparkle. At first I made this as a non-animated sparkle, but now I've got an animated sparkle that can also be an ordinary sparkle. So here I just add it in just like that and look at that, it just looks, uh, just looks really, really beautiful. Um, and that's without it being animated. Now, if I wanna animate it, I've got my blank instances lined up. I've got about 25 of them. Maybe I'll add a few more, there we go. And all I have to do for this is hold down control and then, and then press down wherever I want to on the canvas. So we're just gonna do it once through first. And it happens really fast. So then this is what happens with that. This is it playing on loop. Now, if you hold it down and you continue to hold it down, you continue to hold control as well, and you just wiggle it around a little bit, watch what happens. <laughs> so I, it just adds, it loops around and it adds layers on layers of sparkles. So now look at it. So this is something we've built up and this takes a few seconds. You can do this within five seconds of getting to this brush and you can add it onto anything. 
you can change the color of the brush. Now, if you want to change the color of these sparkles, first you have to change it from origin, because right now it's retaining the color through origin, and you change it to alpha max stamp, and then you can change it to whatever you want. You know, you can change it to a sort of glow like this. Right now it's, a, it's got a slightly cold color to it, um, but you can add, uh, add it like this. So I made this little animation of uh, this girl's hair. Let's see. And we've added a few glitters, but let's just add some more because I'm trying to demonstrate this here. Okay, so this is the layer with um, parts. So I'm gonna just um, add a little mask thing there. And then I'm gonna bring this up above. This is blank frames and it's going to be confined to that space in there now because of that little uh, mo uh, stencil that's what it's called stencil so I'm just gonna do the same again hold control and just bring that about like that build it up a few times and then look it's got this amazing dazzling sparkles there and that's really gonna catch your eye I think if this you, all of a sudden you kind of see it you're drawn attention to it so on to the tools now first of all really boring tool I'm sorry about this but these are my eraser settings and I know how frustrating it can be to not have the right eraser straight away um, because when I hop onto someone else's TV paint version and they're using an eraser with settings I don't agree with then I'm just like no I've got to change this for you I think it's important that I can cut into something uh, with ease so you know I, I can just cut into it and look it's sharp let's let's set it to 100 now once you've set it to 100 let's say you've got this eraser on the settings you like now and you want to save it so that when you come back to selecting that tool it's different this time because you're welcome to modify these tools once you get them you right click now this is with the new modified modified settings you right click on it and you click grab current tool it's going to update this tool to have these settings that you've now programmed in so now we've got the fun thing the motion blur now i think a lot of you are going to be really happy to to receive this you've asked me how i get these motion blurs how what's an easy way to give my animations motion blurs well here it is this is the tool all you have to do is let's say the horse is moving you know which direction is moving in right it's moving in this direction okay well we just do this motion blur we give strokes in the opposite direction so we're, we're moving the motion blur things that way and that's to symbolize air resistance and loads of other things so let's just give it some strokes along these lines and it's quite a powerful tool so you don't need much of it you can see here on this line, I'll, maybe that was too much, there we go. And it just gives it that distortion. And it really, when you work this into animation keyframes, it really does make it look like it's moving and that it's meeting air resistance or the shutter speed. So so yeah, um, you, can, you can add in loads of it like this, you know, and go really crazy with it. If this horse is going at 100 miles an hour, or you can just add in a little bit here I've designed this tool so that it doesn't just blur it doesn't just move everything back you see how it moves it in these jagged lines it can make it look like you've put in loads of different strokes when in fact you only had to do like one or two strokes for it you see like that just adds complexity as well so yeah that's my motion blur brush which I will bring out I will bring that out after I've done keyframes on something I'll take it through a pass of adding motion blurs to it. You know, just a few strokes like that and, and you've got something really convincing there. The fill helper, now this is an odd one. And again, it's a variation of the basic sharp line. Just with the things tweaked to exactly how I want. Well, here's, here's a demo of what it does. Let's say I want this line art to, to actually be a different color, but I only want part of it to be a different color. All I have to do is just go to this little tool here. It's got, it looks like the letter A. It says preserve transparency. I'm gonna tick that box. And now I'm gonna set my color to something else. Let's set it to a lighter blue. And now I just put in the stroke here 
and it will cover quite a lot of distance because it's set to be quite large and it's also pressure sensitive it can cover a lot of distance you just press down just a little bit firmer and it will cover a massive amount of distance but I like about it that it has so much control so I can bring it up to this line here and let's say that I want the contents of these lines to be light blue but I don't want the outline to be light blue well using pressure sensitivity I can bring it all the way up to the edge and then not have it go down any further and I use this all the time this is why it's in this pack you see the control that you have with that the other thing uh, that it's good for is is cleaning up little bits of uh, fill mistakes that you've done let's just put this on another layer and demonstrate that so a fill shape here you want to fill this in right but you don't do a very good job at filling it in because you were in a hurry or something uh, in a hurry like I am now okay and you get all these little artifacts like this look at this all these artifacts this is very common you will get these artifacts it's also when you're working with a textured brush and you know you might have like a hundred frames like this you need a brush that is versatile that's very um, easy and intuitive to use that is no nonsense uh, that can just go in there and clean this stuff up so I'll go to my fill helper right here and I'll just look at this it just all of a sudden just m turns it into a block and all I have to do is add a little bit of pressure uh, let's say okay there's this whole patch down here that's not been colored in so common this happens all the time when you're rendering okay well this brush it is a brush but it's gonna make very short work of that that whole space there I can just cover it really fast it's clean, it's responsive, um, it doesn't lag at all, and I use it all the time. So now this one is super important as well, the big soft custom gradient. I'm gonna bring that back actually because it could be a good opportunity to use it. I'm gonna go to the preserve transparency again, big soft custom gradient, I'm gonna do that and now we can just add in that. And now we've got gradients guys, we've got a gradient brush now again this is one of those brushes that I started off by using the airbrush and I decided I'm not happy with the airbrush I'm not happy with having to go over there and press that or figure out a new key for it I want it in my custom brush so I created one and spent a long time tweaking the settings to be how I want them to be and so I feel like this brush you get a lot of control over it let's create a gradient just use the pressure sensitivity and just really light strokes out here and then as we go further and further in we'll do that and then add a bit more it's so smooth to use this smooth and effortless and what you have as well is not just a, a machine made gradient but it's got a little bit of hand that hand stroke touch to it so I'll always prefer doing this with the with the custom brush over any other method really um, and you can get it exactly how you want you know so if we wanted to if we want this to be I, I mean this is these are pretty hideous colors because I'm just picking them at random and I will do this when I'm filling in a character I will do this uh, so uh, here in this little piece of rough animation I've done I'm basically messing around with the line color of things and it's not going so well so I need to edit more of this line color I can edit the line color as much as I want with these and I won't degrade any of the the line itself the line information and we do that by using this preserve transparency tool let's use here the change line color tool and this is a bit scary when you go onto it because it's just gonna fill your whole screen with with a color I double click I'm gonna to go to change line color it's basically just a massive square um, that is a custom brush again click once and then hit a and all of the line color on this layer is going to change 100% to that color see that isn't that great they're so fast this has really been a game changer for me because it means that I can worry just about the animation itself and never worry about 
what color I'm giving things until after the fact. So um, that's super helpful to me because I don't want to have to worry about the color when I'm making the animation because I'm trying to focus on how it moves. Everything on this layer is going to change to this color. And you use that in conjunction with the fill helper. So the fill helper is where you go in later and you say, I want these streaks to be this color. And then you can just, you have that control. Now, the first time I used a brush like this, which was just a big block, I actually used it for a different reason. And I used it as a scene fader. I was looking online for ages of like, how can you fade in and out on a scene? Like fade to black, it's like something that's so simple for, for a storyboarder. Like, let's say that this is one of our storyboards, right? Because I like to storyboard in TV Paint as well as animate. And let's say we want to fade in to this shot. So let's just extend that out, create a new layer above and drag this out and give it some empty instances. And you want to fade it in from black. It's basically got 5% opacity on there and it's a black screen. So I'm just going to click once and then move back one. And now I'm going to click twice. Go back one three times, four times. And you can actually see it here in the little preview um, of the frames, uh, what it's doing exactly and, and how how it's different from the previous frame and I'm actually using that as a guide here. So I'll just spam click a bunch of times now until it looks darker than the frame before. And I just keep going with that. You can also reduce the step like this and actually just wiggle it like that. And that's gonna make it faster. Yeah, and then uh, with this frame, I'm just gonna crank it up to 100% and do that. And, and now we've got an organic scene fade in fade in from black. Now it looks like sometimes you might see these um, horizontal bars like that. That's just because TV paint is struggling to load it in time. It's um, So that's not actually an artifact that's gonna appear on your film at all. That's just because of TV paint and it working away at that. But you see, we've got a nice smooth fade in from black. I mean, maybe you can do it with the camera in TV paint, but I think if you're wanting to just storyboard something, you wanting to create an animatic really quick, this is a way you can fade in, fade out really fast. Here's another trick you can use it for. You can actually fade out your lines, and there are lots of um, practical reasons you might want to fade out your lines. Okay, I'll start here, and instead I'm going to go back to our default setting for scene fader, there we go. And instead, this time, I'm just gonna set it to erase. And now I'm gonna click once, click twice. And you can control this so well because it, it's down to every, every frame, you get to control how much you fade it out. And then this one, I'll do it blank. So you see, I'm fading it out, I'm fading the drawing out. So you could do this to frame by frame animation and have it fade in, fade out, any of that kind of stuff. And this tool is just the way that I do that. It's a way that you can kind of introduce very basic editing into TV Paint as an app. Um, hopefully you benefit from, from having these brushes as much as I have. Link in the description for all the, all the resources. You can get this brush pack. There's also this one, which is an earlier version where I have a bunch of other tools which I also find really helpful. We've got pencil tools, uh, two different types of pencil, we've got this tool which I love. So these are all in my previous brush pack. Um, this tool's so helpful for drawing hair and stuff. Bunch of other ones also in my earlier brush pack and together they just form an ultimate combo. Look at that. Now if you like this video and you want to see more from me I highly recommend this video that's coming up on the screen now. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.